Hey, everybody. Thank you for being out here with Country 1025 and House of Blues Boston in the Foundation Room. Why don't we give it up for Warner Music artist Michael Ray? Thank you. All right, how about one more time for Michael Ray? There we go, all right. Michael, so good to see you. You too. Uh, just off the heels of seeing you perform for with Darius Rucker. Yeah. And your song, Kiss You in the Morning, number one. Uh, you got a new single, Think a Little Last Now. I have to ask you, when that song, Kiss You in the Morning, went to number one, how did you feel? Where were we when you found out? Give uh, me the scoop. That whole week was a, was a whirlwind. It just so happened and doesn't always work you know, turn out like this, but it did. Um, the, the week it went number one, the record came out and I was playing Good Morning America like the, my, that Monday. So like that whole week was just like a blur and we had an album release party at the Walmart in my hometown in like Central Florida and like my aunt and my cousins worked there, you know? So it was like, it was just like, and I, haven't been, I don't get to come home a lot. So it was just a whole week was just this awesome, you know, celebration, all my family and friends that have helped me get to where I am. And, and so, so to, for it to go number one and for me to be back home, you know, with my dad and grandmother and everybody, it was, it was a really cool time. So That's so awesome. Now, speaking of family, I know that when you were in your teens, you played in a band with your grandfather, right? Yeah. All right, can you tell me a little bit about what that was like to play with your grandfather? It, yeah, it was, it was um, you know, it was funny. My, my family had a band my whole life. Uh, before I was born, it was my dad, my grandpa, my uncle, my cousins. And so as life came on and kids came on and, you know, jobs and kind of started to a little bit, my grandfather continued to play every weekend. And so they had me on stage when I was little, but about nine, I actually started wanting to learn how to play guitar for real, you know. So him and my dad would teach me some stuff. And, and uh, I just loved it. I loved spending time with him. And, and uh, so we would I'd play every weekend with him. And we'd play the Moose Lodges and the, the community centers and, we played some assisted living homes, you know, and like whatever, whatever, whatever it may be, you know, because in Florida, all the retirees come down there for the winter time, and so those are my grandpa's buddies or band members, and and so that's what we did. And uh, but it, you know, it taught me I, my my first love of music was you know Earl Thomas Conley and Ray Price and uh, Waylon Jennings and you know George Jones. I could go on and on. So I, the, it it created this love of of you know, traditional country music and the Grand Old Opry. And so it was a really cool time, you know, that I'm glad I, I was able to able to go through and, and the memories I have with him, you know, are priceless. So Oh, of course. Absolutely. I heard a funny story about your birthday party and it was mostly senior citizens. Oh yeah. Yeah, my sixteenth birthday party was uh me, a few of my buddies, like two, three of my buddies, and then everybody else was like in their seventies because <laughs> everybody I hung out with on weekends were my grandpa's friends. And so and we just all hung out and jammed in the back and then made a circle and just jammed around a bonfire. So. That's awesome. <laughs> really cool. And then also, uh, I think just a couple years ago, because you've been touring, gosh, for so many years, yeah. and I know that you toured for a long time in a van. And, yes. then, like, and then in the last couple of years, I believe you got a tour bus. So what was it like to finally get that bus and then after being in the, the van? It was like, it's like somebody, it's like buying a mansion after like living in a in a single wide trailer your whole life you know what i mean like like we it's seven of us well so when i first moved to nashville seven of me and my six other band members lived in a two-bedroom two-bath apartment and so we had to share all that i drove the tour van as a vehicle because we didn't have a car and matter of fact when i wrote run away with you with john rich uh -huh. i drove that s seven dudes living in a tour van we don't need to go on about what it looked nor smelt like so we just all assume we understand so it's not the most like cool thing to be driving around Nashville, but we had to do it, you know. And so, uh, but you know, what's it it funny is me and the guys talk because a lot of my band uh, is from my hometown, and so we talk about the times of like, you know, all our stupid inside jokes and all the stuff that you know we don't want anybody to know, you know, uh, you know was 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 talked about or you know uh, we we became we became a, a bond and a, and a family in that van, and so even though there were great times. I'm glad to, yeah, the, the bus definitely makes it a whole lot easier, uh, so so I'm, I'm very fortunate for that. Moving on up to the yes, mansion. That's right. Yeah. That's I did right. hear it smelled like chilies in the van. It smelled well, so the back lounge of it was a, uh, I say lounge, the back row my, my bass player took out, and I was on radio tour at this time, and so he said, hey, man, we were on tour with Sam Hunt, the Lipstick Graffiti Tour, and he said, uh, I got a little surprise for you. He was working at Chili's at the time, and so he took out the he. They were renovating the bar, and he took the cushions out of the benches where they were re, uh, remodeling, 
and made like this bed in the back. And so like two people could sleep in the back of the lounge of the, of the van. So which is a game changer in a van. We had a cooler up front. Uh-huh. We had like a Chili's made bed in the back. And other than that, it was all good, man. It was cool. Awesome. <laughs> Probably make you hungry. Yes, yeah. He gave us a discount, so it was good. That's nice. That's so nice. <laughs> now, I'm wondering, you've obviously mentioned a lot of the artists that you played in your teens as an influence, and then you've toured with Darius and Brantley Gilbert and yeah. Kit Moore. Uh, what, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a musician, but would you say is the best piece of advice you got so far? Man, Darius Rucker um, is like a, came... At the end of that tour, it was like he was a mentor for Dan and Shay and I. And, uh, and we are, all three of us, I feel like I speak for them, are better artists and people for touring with, with Darius. And so um, one night, I mean, he told us so much stuff. And, and one thing was, you know, he told us one day, he said, man, he said, well, I know that you three will be here where I'm at. And he said, one thing I want you to take away from this whole tour is how to treat your openers. And he said, and how, to, how to treat the people around you. And, but one thing I'll never forget, we were in Tampa, Florida. It was the first night of the tour. And we go out to sing Hold My Hand with him, and, um, which was re- unbelievable, as it is. And because uh, if you grew up playing acoustic guitar and you knew a Hootie and the Blowfish song, oh, you yeah. were the dude at any party you went to, <laughs> right? So you did not have to know much. Um, and so I'm up there. It's already surreal. I'm playing this amphitheater I grew up going to see in other concerts in, you know, and I'm with Darius singing a Hootie song. and oh, wow. and. He looks over at me, and he's, he takes his ear out to our inner monitor, and he said, man, can you believe we get to do this for a living? Uh-huh. And I thought, you know, I thought, I go, man, somebody that's been doing it as long as he has, some people think maybe he's, you know, fed up with it, or he doesn't really care, or, you know, because a lot of people, when they're doing it for a long time, you know, sometimes that's the case, and that's not at all the case for him, you know, and I just, I thought, man, if he, he has this passion still for what he does 30 years later, just like he did when he, it was the you know, beginning, and so... Um, I'll never forget that moment. That's been like my motivator when I'm tired, you know? I'm like, we get to do this for a living. Yeah, I just yeah. save myself and then we go. So that was probably the best advice. Now, I don't even think he meant to give to me. He was just saying, but it changed my, uh, it changed my outlook on a lot of things. So. That's amazing advice. Wow. So cool. It was great. Uh, so my final thing I wanted to ask you, and it's just kind of for fun. Yeah. All right. Something about you that would surprise listeners, your fans, to know? It could be like a weird habit or a quirk or a tattoo that is hidden or whatever you got. I don't have anything (laughs) hidden. Uh, They're all pretty visible. Uh, Trying to think something uh, something people don't know. Um, I, uh, this has been known before, but like, I have this, I love like older TV shows. And one of my favorite shows is The Golden Girls. Woohoo! Yeah! I own all the seasons. That's so awesome. Yeah. Thank you for uh, being a thank friend. Thank you. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> awesome. Great, great. Way to go right into the to the to the you intro have to, of the song. Man. Yes. It's a great theme song. If you threw a party and invited everyone you knew, you would see the biggest gift from me would be from me and the card attached would say, Thank you for being, being a, a friend. friend. <laughs> all right. Give it up again for Michael Ray, everybody.